Is, is Jeannie taking minutes? Yeah. Sure. All right, so we're, we're ready to go. Good, welcome to the Chairman Board of Selectmen meeting of July 10th. We're having an unusual afternoon meeting because of some scheduling challenges we had. Um, I'm gonna ask if uh, Town Administrator Dave Williams would read the agenda, please. Sure, thank you. Uh, first, we'll start out with public comment and then consideration of external borrowing and the authorization, signing, and witnessing of that borrowing. And then consideration of September 9th, 2014 election warrant. And then grant acceptance of a federal grant for the fire department turnout gear. And then a discussion on the treasurer retirement. And then a look at different financial control policies that we've talked about at different times. And then looking at um, under the town administrator report, a personnel update, a farm pond update, transfer station update, uh, fire chief grant for a conference attendance, a reserve fund transfer request for the current fiscal year, look at upcoming meeting topics, and then selectman reports, meeting calendar, and set the next meeting. There are no minutes to approve, and there are several warrants that need to be approved. Okay, good. Thanks. Anybody have anything to add to the agenda or changes? No, nothing to add here. Okay. Well, just a concern that one of the items here was to consider financial control policies, and there was none in my packet. Right. I, I sent out an email saying that I would be bringing them to the meeting, and you probably wouldn't be able to approve them today. Okay. Because yeah, they I'd weren't, like to read they them weren't before sent out. I right. <laughs> right. 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 I mean, it's usually good to have two readings of a policy, something okay. like that. So. Good. Okay, so we have a motion. Standing, move to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Agenda is approved, and we're off to the races. Um, public comments. Sign up. Frank Hess comes first. Thank you. Um, I went to the recycling committee meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple things came up. One, which was a really a good thing, is that uh, talking about a new uh, food waste stream which I think is an excellent thing and might help reduce our, our tonnage. And I think that we should do everything we can in town to uh, make that known to the public and educate the people to go in that direction. The other thing was the pay as you throw. And I've studied this and I think that this would be a financial loss for the citizens of Sherbourne. okay? It would be a negative impact on the residents as far as the cost is concerned. And I know that you might have this on some future agenda so we can discuss it in detail in the future. But it, it does not pay for Sherbin to do this. It would actually be a loss. And I think I can show the figures if, if someone wants to see them. And if we should go this route, some, someone said, well, just the selectman can approve it. And maybe that's the legal way it can go is the selectman can approve it. But I don't think in this town that would be the, the proper way to do it. I think the citizens will want to have some voice on that. Uh, for one thing, if you pass this, it sort of increases the uh, amount of money you have in so that you have more money to spend otherwise so that you wouldn't have to perhaps go for an override sometime. So it's really a sort of an under the table override. And if it's just the selectmen, it would be a, a selectman's tax. It would be a selectman's permanent override tax is what it would be if it would just came from you folks right here, which you might be able to do. That's why I think if we do it, um, it should be done from the town. But once again, I, I don't think the figures bear out. I think that uh, the increased cost to the citizens would be more than you could possibly save. And so um, if it's going to be on some future agenda, then I'd like to be able to speak to it at that time, too. Great. Thanks, Frank. You're welcome. And we have uh, Melinda O'Neill as the next speaker. I don't know if, I mean, this is just sort of an update on the weed watchers. I don't know if it makes sense to wait until the farm pond update and lump it all together if it makes a difference? No, go ahead. That was good. Oh, okay. Um, so the uh, farm pond advisory committee was excited to report that we had another one of those weed watchers presentations when the, um, DCR comes in and teaches us the plants we want in and not in the pond. And this was last Tuesday night and we had about 15 people there including children and some abutters. And um, so we felt very good about it, the participation. And um, a couple things that I thought I just wanted to plant the seed. Um, one was that they said the number one um, source of phosphorus in the water generally is geese. So if you want to just kind of keep that in mind. I had always just assumed that it was probably runoff from fertilizer. Um, and the other thing was, um, 
oh, the aquariums, that a lot of these weeds that enter into the ponds, as we know, get wrapped up in the electric and, and um, gas motors, but aquariums also are a huge um, problem. So that's something we'll be working on going forward is making sure that people understand that you don't want to dump your aquarium waste into a farm pond. Um, and the number one prevention method, which they were very clear to share with us, is to just keep check what's going on. So we feel really good about staying with the weed watchers and really working on this education piece. Um, we were excited to learn recently that the guys, which I'm sure you will share. No, I'm doing now. What's that? Share it now. Oh, um, this is really terrific news. So we've already, you know, embarked on the farm pond management plan, as you know, and the engineering study is in motion. And um, they said the pond is like crystal clear. So they've already dropped cameras in there. They've been peeking around, and you would expect maybe to find some weeds or you know something. And so far, so good. It looks really, really good. So we are just Great. delighted. Great. Yeah, yeah, it's really good news. So we're very excited. I think that's it. That's just a little snapshot. So we just, right. oh. There's also a, yeah, you might, you maybe one of you guys can help me with this. There's also a new state law that was passed that said you are not allowed to transfer the weeds on your motors. There's a specific law by any, all right, by any method. So this is a really important piece of legislation, so thank you for reminding me. Um, there's a law against transferring these weeds from spot to spot. Um, so I think that might tie into some other things that we've been sort of talking around. Um, how do you enforce all the um, things that we're trying to do to protect the pond, so. That's great. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for all you're doing for the time. Sure. Okay, now we're on to external borrowing. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add that there was some talk about Leland Farms being on this agenda, but it's actually August 7th. Okay, so it got changed. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and that was because we wanted to have the current appointee present, and that was the first date that we could arrange that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and mailing is going to go out to the residents okay. about that. So. All right, okay. great, thank you. Sorry, much. thanks. Okay, that's good. The, the borrowing, um, you just passed out a sheet, yeah. so could I move to approve the sale of $627,545.50 bond anticipation loan with interest at 0.55% to Unibank for savings at par as negotiated by the treasurer? I'll second that, but I'd like a little discussion, I'd, uh, just a yeah. quick Quick question, we're, we're financing or borrowing for the cell tower public safety communications equipment. Uh, however, we can't put up a cell tower quite yet because we're still in litigation. So the question right. is why we would do that now. Well, I didn't want to miss the opportunity and the low interest cost to be able to have it in our back pocket for it ready to go. I, so, if when things, yeah. yeah, okay. And um, you, you had a question earlier about the um, the school capital. Yeah, I see it's here. There. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's in our warrant for today. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, this, for, just for the benefit of the public, this is to cover communications equipment, <clears throat> the CMD dump truck, the CMD fuel accounting software, school improvements, which I take to be Pine Hill, yes. fire station, HVAC, and regional school improvements for a total of 627. I just want to note that it's a, it's a bond anticipation yes. note. So we'll bundle that in a bond at some point in the right, future, as right. we've historically done. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Great. Any further discussion? We have a motion. We have a second. So all in favor? Aye. Okay. And uh, we have to have the town clerk witness <laughs> our signature. We have the town clerk who is here. She can't, Frank, you have to duck so she can witness our signature. <laughs> uh, okay. You want a blue pen? Well, I'm doing it in black, I guess. Does it matter? Yeah, blue is better. Get a blue. Because when it's black, it's hard to tell whether it's whether it's a photocopy or the real. Right, right, right. Okay, you got those. Yep. 
Do, do we all sign this one? I think we do. There's three lines, multiple lines. Yeah, all of uh, Paul missed this one. Oh, the top one. Okay. No escaping. Peter, you sign where it says guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be using your name, Paul. I've <laughs> I, I can do your signature in my sleep now, Paul. There you go. So, Paul, you got to sign that top one. The top uh, one. The second page there. Um, okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have an election warrant to um, approve. This is for the September 9th, 2014. I guess primary election, uh, which involves a number of state and uh, district offices, county offices. Um, so do we have a I motion? move to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Here's the original. Okay, aye. So aye. it's approved. Is that another one where we have to be witnessed? No. No, okay. This is for a senator in Congress. Which which senator, U.S. senator, is up for re-election? I don't know. Does the town clerk know? I'm actually not sure. I have a total blank, Paul. He was like another term, wasn't Elizabeth Warren is who filled in his? Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren? Well, Marky. The other guy. Do you have a 50 Marky? Marky had the short term. Marky filled in for someone. Right, so he finished out. Carries. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So the next item is somebody wants to give us money, and so yes. we ask the fire chief. Yeah, I would call to, them. Uh, let us know what's going on here. Chief Tim Morris, yep. Yeah. This is actually the end of a long road that uh, Chief McPherson started uh, the year before, the full year before I arrived. He put in for uh, a grant with the federal government request for uh, 30, 31 sets of turnout gear to replace uh, the aging turnout gear that the department had. Unfortunately, we missed it by that much last year. Uh, we were able to talk with uh, the panel, find out you know, what we needed to tweak and everything on the new application. Uh, we did just that, put the stuff in and moved us right to the front of the line this time instead of uh, at the end. So we were very fortunate to get uh, 83,000 and change is the total for the grant. Uh, we provide a 5% copay and they give the rest. So copay has already been handled with the vendor and uh, by the fall we're going to have him in, do the measurements and we're looking at uh, roughly about 31 sets of brand new fire gear for everybody in the department. Um, with that, fire gear lasts about 10 years. It's going to help us with our uh, uh, continued planning where we get two, three, four sets of uh, turnout gear every year so that hopefully in 10 years we're not in the same boat again where we need a, a large grant for, uh, you know, replacement of it. Oh, that's great. Really, Chief, really, as really I good. recall, there were only four communities in the state who got a grant this, so this far. Round. Right. And so we were one of very few. Yep. So my hat's off to you. Thank it's you. It's very competitive, and uh, Chief McPherson wrote a very good uh, uh, application. And like I said, we tweaked it. We were able to uh, update it with some uh, numbers and statistics uh, to to let the grant readers uh, really get a good idea of what, what we were up against. <clears throat> and like I said, it moved us from being at the rear to right to the front of the line. So uh, it's it's great for the community. and. It, it's costing us only four thousand dollars to get thirty sets of gear. Uh, it's fantastic. And this is federal money. It's federal money. Yeah, this is awesome, Chief. What what is the gear, and what do we do with the old gear? The old well, the new gear is just what you see as a firefighter uh, on the side of the road: helmet, coat, boots, <coughs> pants, gloves, the whole the whole shebang. Yeah. Uh, the older gear will be sorted. It will be classified depending on its uh, its age, and the good under 10 year gear is going to go into a reserve 
That way, if we have people going to the fire academy and they're going to take a, a smoky, hot fire class, well, we'd rather they take a, a, a good set of spare gear instead of the, the brand new gear. But the same being said, we get a smoky, dirty fire one day here. We've got spare gear. They can take their gear to the washing machine at the firehouse. It takes about a day or a day and a half to get it dried out and cleaned. We can instantly give you a brand, you know, brand clean spanking set of spare gear that'll suffice in the meantime. So uh, it, it gives us a good inventory too for new people coming in. Terrific, great. Yeah. Good. Thanks for uh, working on that, and, and Neil as well. I know you said Neil McPherson had a lot to do with this, too. Yeah, he, he was definitely the lead in all of this, yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Mr. Chair, while we have the fire chief here, sure. <laughs> can we take the um, fire chief grant for conference attendance out of Oh, yeah, order? that's a great idea. Well, that's another thing well done. You're going to go to a conference that's not going to cost us a penny, is no. what I read here. That's correct. That includes... It was airfare, the cost of the conference, which is not cheap, and it's uh, for the people uh, watching or in the audience, uh, uh, they're through the International Association of Fire Chiefs, that they have an annual conference this year. It's in Dallas, Texas. They offer two scholarships to uh, departments, to people that otherwise would be unable to attend the conference. Um, the co like I said, the cost of the conference is significant at uh, $600 just to entry fee into the conference and then of course getting yourself there and staying they offer two scholarships for fifteen hundred dollars uh, I had you know you fill out the online uh, question and answer thing write in your why you think you should be uh, chosen and everything which I did and explain you know I come from a you know a smaller community rural community in Massachusetts and uh, it's just not in our budget for such a conference you know it's more local that uh, is included in our budget. And uh, out of the blue two weeks ago, I've got a phone call in the afternoon uh, saying that uh, I was chosen. Uh, the, uh, the check will be waiting for me, it's pay up front, <laughs> to me, and uh, it was in the fine print that uh, attendance is mandatory at the sessions. We do take attendance to make sure you're not coming down for uh, a $1,500 vacation, courtesy of the uh, Chiefs Association. In August. In yeah, in August, August in Dallas. Uh, August in Dallas. It wasn't yeah. necessarily where I'd be planning on <laughs> spending my summer vacation. I hope the hotel was connected to the conference center. Uh, but uh, yeah, it covered everything uh, as I showed uh, David uh, in an email. So. Uh, yeah, and they have that email. They have a copy right. of that email. Yeah. Excellent. I, I couldn't remember it. who I sent it to, but. Uh, and you also mentioned to me that there's some sort of follow up later. Yeah. Uh, they they like to follow up with uh, the, uh, the scholarship uh, awardees to see down the road, like six months. You know, what did you get out of the conference? What were you able to bring back to your community? Um, what were you able to uh, possibly implement or bring into some of your policies, procedures, training, etc.? Uh, they, they they're looking for some feedback, obviously, for their investment. You know, they're spending three thousand dollars for two people. They're looking to see, uh, you know, are they on the right path too? And you know, what they want to do to maybe tweak it on their end. So. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice relationship, and it'll, again, it'll be a great networking thing. Uh, you know, talking and meeting other people from across the country and seeing what, you know, what they're doing. That's great. Uh, the chief of Holliston, by the way, is presenting. The fire chief, he'll also be there. So, uh, we do have some local uh, chiefs that'll be attending. Oh, good. Th do thanks. we formally accept these grants? Is, are we supposed yes. to do that? Yes. So we need to have a motion and a vote. Uh, so moved to Second. accept both grants. Okay. All in favor. Well, the department really uh, appreciates your support. Well, I see. Oh, we really appreciate do. your efforts to get money into the fire department's coffers that doesn't come out of Sherman taxpayers' pockets. That's great. You, you, you don't know until you try. That's what That's I tell right. my members. You know, if you see something, swing, apply. Right? Send it in. What do you got to lose? The worst they'll tell you? No. It doesn't fly this time. That's yeah. all. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Thank Chief. You. Thanks. Okay. Um, anything else we should take out of order, or should we move on to the Treasury discussion? Um, Unless you wanted to do the reserve fund transfer piece. Um, is that something somebody has to witness or anything? No. I mean, if it's, if it's quick, we might as well do it. It's something we want to get out of the way. Right? Yeah, it was the, it's a reserve transfer request for FY15, mm -hmm. and that is um, for insurance. The, we actually got the invoice in June, and it was about 5000 more 
than what was budgeted, or 5,800 more than what was budgeted. When we come up with a budget number, it's in December. Um, and it's mostly for the police and fire um, risk coverage, which is not through the mass um, interlocal insurance group, but through an outside carrier. So we really don't know what um, that number is going to be until they send us the invoice because it's based on not just our um, loss runs, but also local and national loss runs. So I move that we approve and support a reserve fund transfer for fiscal 15 and the amount of $5,800. Is that the right amount, David, or should we be using your precise calculation there? We should use the precise 5873.40. I second that. Okay. And, and David, we, is this an increase from last year also? The, uh, the no, we, we actually oh. reduced the insurance budget overall. Okay. But it was just in the, we dropped the workers' comp by about $20,000 or something. But this one just, we didn't project was going to increase as much as it did. So we're paying for this from reserve fund? But there may be money going back to the reserve fund out of that line item later? Yeah, there are a couple of ways that could work. Basically, there are adjustments through the year, but the, the bill is due now. Right. So through the year, we'll get adjustments in the insurance when we take a, a vehicle off the insurance. And they'll send us a check back, but that check will go into the general fund. Okay. So it would net out in the end, um, and maybe in the last two months of the year, under the Municipal Relief Act, maybe at that point, if we see money someplace else, we could transfer money back into the reserve fund and okay. uh, keep it whole. And, and this was approved by advisory, too? That's what it looks like here. You've got an email from advisory on that? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't they're think they're they've approved it. Yet. They haven't met yet. They yeah. plan they've to be, not met. Okay. They're she scheduling a meeting to approve it. Okay. I met with her this morning. I, I don't think that yeah. there are any Yeah, so the only other discussion I would have on this is that you know, David, uh, I sat with him and we looked at what he had budgeted by the basic categories mm -hmm. and it looks like that we under budgeted by about, I don't know, 15 grand or so, the Chubb Police and Fire Department risk coverage. So, you know, I think understanding what's going on there better will be helpful. Yeah, I think in years past they've, they've just been increasing the lines. Yes. And they haven't adjusted the budgets within those lines. So, um, that's why we dropped the workers' comp to reflect the actual. Yeah. So once once we can, probably another year, and we'll be able to those lines Better will project actually reflect what each line is. Yeah. 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 Because they are kind of mixed up. They're right all now. over the place. Yeah. Okay. Good. And and we'll we'll pay that in time to get the early payment yes. discount. Perfect. Yes. All right. So we have a motion. And it's been seconded. Seconded. Okay. All in favor. Aye. All right. So is there something you're supposed to sign? Should no. You it's just I'll have to get that to you. oh. <laughs> you'll, you'll reflect that yeah okay all right good okay so now we'll talk about uh, treasurer okay um, as you know the, our uh, 36 and a half year veteran treasurer Pete Hoagland is retiring as of July 31st um, there are a number of issues that um, have come up in trying to transition through that before you go on can I just say how much we appreciate the 36, 37 years of Pete Hoagland's service to the community. Yeah. Sorry for that. I didn't realize he was here. Um, yeah, yeah the, the watch you get, you're, you're wearing it. <laughs> so, um, Basically, there are a number of things to look at. There's staffing, there's some sort of consulting protection um, and, and coverage for, from day to day. Um, and what I had initially done was put together some sort of advisory team. And basically, that's an advisory task force under the town administrator. And that includes um, me, Peter Caruso, Ben Williams from advisory, uh, a member from the governance task force who is meeting later and they're going to determine who that member is going to be. And then a member of the general public also to be determined. And um, again, this is not, uh, it's not covered under open meeting law. It's just an advisory task force. There may not even be a meeting where all these people are called to the table, but it's an advisory function. Um, just to look at things as we go through the whole 
whole process. So um, they're resources for you, right? Right, right. It also adds just some, you know, public perception of, of validity that other people are, are looking in and involved right. in, in the process. Um, so on staffing and consulting, I've given you some information about a consultant that I would like to get support on um, bringing in. And I'm estimating that that would probably be, on average, five hours a week. Um, and their rate is 85 an hour. So I was looking to have them, or, or expect them to pro provide some professional continuity until the full-time treasurer is either elected or appointed at the end of next year. I, I looked over the paperwork here, and it, they, they sounded very good, but because I'm a lawyer, I mm -hmm. just wanted to verify that you, you don't think that this has to have any procurement with it? No. I've used them before, and I don't think the dollar amount is going to, to trigger any procurement issues. Okay. Um, but they are a, a credible resource. They filled in, I think, for almost two years in, in Weston when a similar event happened there. So they provide outsourced accounting and financial services, municipal accounting and financial right. they, services. They have a pool basically. of um, town accountants and treasurers that they can place in a workplace for any amount of hours they could. But that's fulfill. not what you're, you're, you're more looking for the con consultative uh, value On average, added. just to have somebody check in once a week to make sure that reconciliations are getting done and also that there's a professional resource um, for us to ask questions to uh, right. and just be available. Right. And again, it's almost like having an outside third party auditor you know, on advising you, yeah, on yeah. staff. So yeah. keeping an eye out. That makes sense. So um, basically, there's the um, there's the staffing options with the existing assistant treasurer. Well, before we leave this, do you want to vote on this? Um, you don't need a vote, or if you, well, I think Paul, I think it might be helpful because I've talked briefly to David about what he's thinking after what he's already put forth, what you've reviewed, and I think it would be helpful just to get an understanding of the overall picture of how to go forward. Yep. I think this element uh, makes good sense of the overall picture, but until you know that, it's hard to right. grasp it. Yeah. yeah, so basically I would see it as um, trying to make ends meet with the available budget, and that would include um, increasing hours of the existing assistant um, treasurer um, for a period of time and committing to the consultant for that extended period of time and then also having one other person come in be them as a uh, supplemental employee or uh, preferably a contractor um, as a contracted consultant to do um, a short-term look at um, the systems and processes and see if there are anything that they want to recommend that we should be doing differently or help us align the office for a long-term vision which was talked about at last year's town meeting uh, that the selectmen had put forward that sort of finance director type structure. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, can you tell us about that Department of Revenue thing that you sent around that they had surveyed communities about how they handle the treasurer's function? Um, yeah, I'll try to do it from memory, <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, the, the DOR had surveyed all municipalities, and I think it was about two-thirds of the municipalities have gone to an appointed treasurer. And I also spoke to our, um, you know, the consultant I'd like to bring in, and he, he said, you know, that's the, that's the trend, that's the recommended course of action for communities go to is an appointed treasurer. Um, and most of those are appointed treasurer collectors. So I think that that was the gist of what that study was. I, I recall that Sherburn was in a category that only 24% of the communities in Massachusetts are in. Right. And that 76% therefore was 
handling the job differently, either appointed individually or appointed to a joint right. treasurer collector. Right. And most all of those communities were elected treasurers and elected collectors at one time years ago. And over time, they've all transitioned them to be appointed positions and then combined them. Thanks. So, that, I mean, that's not our structure, obviously, and that's certainly been recommended by the board at least two, two town meetings or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. considered by the board a couple of times. Um, and it may be where the governance task force wants to take the town by next town meeting. This whole exercise that we're, the opportunity of Pete's retirement presents the town, it, 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 you know, the chance to go look and see is this the best way to do things? Are there better way to do things? Whether we're dealing with appointed or elected come next year or the year after or whatever point in the future. But in the interim, given that I th think we're talking about, you know, the plan is to appoint David as interim treasurer. Um, we certainly don't want things to slip through the cracks. We don't want to overburden existing staff, uh, both in the treasurer's side of the office over in the corner there as well as the accounting side of the office uh, and we want David to you know we don't want to overburden him either um, but again we don't want anything slipping through the cracks so combination of a consultant and this additional um, so service we provider appoint, we would appoint the, David as treasurer I th uh, as interim treasurer is what what I think we're, we're the road we're headed down here. Right. Okay. Right. You, that wasn't in the present. <laughs> what you, what no, that's right. So I, you know, just trying Sorry, to left, rem remind us that that's that where we've been, roll, you know, where the ball has been rolling for us at this stage of the game. Um, I think again, it's an opportunity, and it's uh, where we wind up is unknown. But uh, if you, if we think of the long-term structure, what will best serve the community. Um, well, we hope to get smarter about that. No, I asked about the DOR thing because he sent that. Yes. Me. So that's, that's basically all I know is I got this report from you saying that. Right. And I think that came. Well, that's true because you, you also were on that uh, uh, phone call that didn't work there, Paul. Yeah. So you missed that, half I, of I missed the conversation. The yeah. Segment. Yeah. That's I true. can't remember who sent that to me, but I, I thought it came from somebody on the governance task force. So it is an issue that they've already been looking into right yes I just don't know if they're going to be advancing that ball anytime soon or not so okay so basically I was just looking for um, support to have a consultant fill the seat in the office with some time and an outside kind of third party watch over and um, utilizing the assistant the current assistant as much as I can to provide for that continuity until the consultants can make some advisories on, on what should change or, or what we should be doing differently. So did the board already vote that we were we going to... We didn't vote on anything. No. no. We didn't vote on anything. Vote. No, we, don't have, we have that scheduled for a future meeting, we, don't we? We, we, I had trunc we truncated the discussion when your phone cut out. <laughs> okay. So um, I had the... Um, but so the issue before us is to appoint... A, a David no, Williams, the I have treasurer. the actual appointment of the treasurer for effective August 1st. I have that on the agenda for July 24th. Yeah. Um, this is just so I can get the support so I can start moving Putting the pieces, pieces in place. Yeah. yeah. So w just so I can get oriented. So you're saying that as an acting treasurer, you would want to have and would recommend to have these resources and here's how you would handle a job and so on that's right so i can put things into pigeonholes right so when you talked about the consultant i originally thought you were talking you know maybe having appointing the consultant the treasurer but no so I you don't. would be the treasurer and you would have a consultant and you would have staff and you would have uh you'd have pete as a resource because he's here to Dave, David, would not be, David would not be treasurer until Pete was gone. Yeah. So he will not have Pete as a resource. Well, well I except, that by, that except by phone. He's except not going to talk I mean, to Peter for. <laughs> no, 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 except by, except by phone. But yeah, they're, they're not going to they're not going to overlap in in that office, of course. 
Yes, but I, I we'll be working together that, for the rest of the month. Yes, yeah. that while we're in July and while right. Pete Hoagland is here on duty and you're here, that we don't waste that opportunity. Right, right. And that's why I want to bring in um, the consultant as quickly as possible to meet with us as well, so, so that they're included in that. So then shouldn't we be deciding whether that's, this is the road we want to go and give him preliminary authorization if that's what the board decides so he can... Well, I think David's presented us with a couple of different options and a bunch of questions here that he's looking for guidance on, so we should, you know, I think give him that guidance. Uh, we can, yeah, you can either provide the guidance or well, I think just even say what work you within just the available resources. You're working within the, the budget, right, David? Right. And you've described even... Uh, slight modification to these options it sounds like to me yeah if if the selectmen you know direct to go ahead and do what's prudent using the available resources and um, apply those to consulting and existing staff for whatever duration then um, you know that's really all I would need to get moving forward on, on right that. and but the longer term approach is to identify somebody in some fashion who would right. logically be the next person who ran for treasurer. Maybe there's right. more than one person who wants to run for treasurer, but I, I have a feeling we may have to recruit or, or otherwise uh, right. identify somebody who's interested in taking on that job as a, as a full-time job. Yeah, normally, um, you know, the board would want to um, have somebody fill that seat before or have be experienced in it so that they can see what it's like and then they could run for it or be appointed for it depending on if it changes to being appointed well, and there's um, nothing but the to process say. to do that is is what you know yeah. do you hold a full hiring process or? because you're making an assumption that the the current structure is the best I is that it, uh, well, well but that's the structure we have now that's the structure we have now that's correct now the structure is slightly changing by virtue of what we've been talking about making him interim treasurer with these el uh, various elements and all of that could change at any point between now and either the next election or the next town meeting should the voters be presented with the decision of going from elected official to appointed of you know treasurer in that situation which well can i suggest uh, just picking up on what he said about a a successor treasurer I, I i would like to see it's advertised and people have a chance to apply and here's an opportunity i i, I see for the board and for the town administrator to show a professional hiring process if that's a different approach than what we've described here though paul i think that's no i'm, I'm talking a, about long term long right, term right. yes uh, but but because he can only serve but that long term is nine months or thereabouts or some portion of that nine months that's correct but at, but at some point we have to figure out the ultimate goal of of having a treasurer and right now the structure is whatever it is elected wouldn't it make sense somewhere in that process to have advertisements have people apply have them show what their skills are what their knowledge are I guess my my comfort level on that Paul would be I don't know if at this point in time if that's that, that seems to me more of the same. I don't know if more of the same is the best thing for the town. And again, I think this is an opportunity. Now, I, I mean, we, I think we've had some discussion about this previously. Um, I, I am sitting here listening to, 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 to ping pong, but, but the mm -hmm. way I look at it is we have an elected treasurer, and until that's changed at town meeting for the next election, I mean, my understanding is that's going to be voted on in... No, in no, and I'm next not. Next May, yes. and I think it's highly unlikely that before next May we're going to change the position. Maybe we will. Maybe there'll be a proposal in a fall town meeting, and it'll it'll pass. But if if not, then what we're looking at is an interim process here, where we hire some experts, and David consults with some experts and tries 
to see if there's something else longer term right. that we should be doing with that office and tries to structure things in a way that makes it easy to make that change, but with the understanding that at some point we may have another elected treasurer who hopefully will buy into whatever David comes up with as a new approach. Right, That's so why, why would we go out and try and re recruit someone for a job we can't describe? I don't because think we're recruiting anybody now. I well, that, I mean, maybe that's what, uh, that's what I'm hearing from Paul. My concern is we just don't don't leave it to this informal caucus where you look around and say, would somebody please step forward and take this job? And then anybody raises their hand and just says, I'll, you know, I'll do it. And, and then we have somebody get nominated because nobody else knows anything. No, I, I get you. Whereas I think David... You, Proceed in a little more systematic way. Let everybody know. Let let applications come in. Try and if it's help elected, the community. If it's an elected position, we're not accepting applications for an elected position. Well, eventually, we could, after this process unfolds, and and David's working consultants and all of that, we can appoint a a, a uh, further an interim. Treasurer right. for six months or three months or whatever. Yeah, right. we could. We don't. We, 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 you're assuming that he's going to stay there all the way through. No, the no, election. no. I'm not assuming that. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. Don't understand how we could do what you're describing now. at this point. Yeah, I, and I'm. I'm with Peter on that. I don't. Well, understand I, I think. Right. I understand. Immediately, we we, we we need to have coverage for June 31st <laughs> when Pete leaves. July. I, yeah. Ju yeah July 31st. Yeah. I I understand that. I, all I'm saying is that the appointment can't be a permanent appointment because it is an elected position, and it's I don't not think a permanent appointment. I don't think Dave can live live with doesn't live in the town. So the problem with elected officials is they have to be town residents. You can't hire on the basis of who's best qualified. You've got to hire on the basis you have to be a resident of the town. That was the recommendation from Colin. So at some we point, we can put a bed for him downstairs. But no. Uh, so at some point in the next nine months, we have to totally agree. So if the appoint, if we're going to appoint him as interim, I, I'm thinking it should be not all the way through and including. Well, how about this? I I, I think w what we should in the direction that we would provide David, one element ought to be these consulting people should come back to us within a point, you know, a period of time, six months, four months, somewhere in that range of uh, various, uh, of whatever they've learned and any recommendations or considerations that we can evaluate, at which point then I think going forward with what your suggestion would make sense. I would say 60 days or well, if you do that, uh, yeah, I mean, 90 days is probably more 90 days at least, yeah. But, but the appointment of David would be an appointment until the seat is somebody is else's appointment. Like, I mean, I don't right. think David's taking this on out of the goodness of his heart and a desire to make the town a, a better place, but he's not getting paid extra for it. He's already got a lot of responsibilities. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to step aside if somebody else is identified who we think is you know, worthy of being appointed for a further interim period until the next election or until some change in the structure. Okay. Fine, that was my only point. So that if, if a motion is made to appoint him, it's with the understanding that, that, that that's, there is a well, right implicit now, time limit. Yeah, we're, we're not, not going to do that until the 24th, though. Yeah, we're not doing that appointment until then. But at this point, I, I, I'm, I support the approach that David described with the understanding that there'd be some something coming back to us uh, as a result of that uh, grouping of resources you're going to be utilizing. Right, and we, we could give you a, a budget update at that point to see where we are with personnel yeah. lines. And so that means the, of these questions you've posed for us, um, I'm not sure any of the first three are ones that we really even need to tackle at this point. Right. No, the, at some point, and you know, I'll gauge that with um, whoever the governance task force re representative is about, are they going to be pursuing um, the position as being appointed or are they just going to be looking at it? Um, and I can report that back to you guys. 
the other issue is the uh, clo closeout audit um, that was recommended by the our auditors at Melanson Heath. And I did do some checking around. It, it's a recommended practice if it's beyond a, a, the end of a fiscal year. Um, but it, it's, it's a, a no-brainer. It's a well, it's a forty-five hundred-dollar brainer <laughs> yeah. on 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 basically a bank rec bank reconciliations of the accounts. If I'm mm -hmm. understanding what this is all about, and we reconcile those bank accounts every month. And we have very competent people who do that. And the risk of an error is really a timing error. It's not a, you know, there's not, mis uh, uh, the, the risk of misappropriation of funds is nil. So it's really just a timing error of when you say, this is the amount in the bank account that I'm turning <coughs> over. Only I'm turning over 27 bank accounts or whatever it is. So, well, I'm right? saying it's a no-brainer because I've been through this process in other communities. And when you're hiring somebody to come in, and again, these are situations where people are hired to come in, professionals coming into an office want to have, for their own protection, to know what the baseline is of what they're assuming. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem recruiting if this was an appointed position. You'd have a problem re recruiting a true professional because they're not going to want to take on unknowns. Well, we're auditing as of June 30th. <laughs> so this is a month later. We have last audited last June 30th, which we're, we'll see a report soon, I hope. And hmm. we'll, um, and we, we reconcile those accounts every month. At least that's my understanding. And we reconcile well. We do a, you know, the, the right. corner office does a great job of that. So again, I, it's a, it's a, it's a forty-five hundred dollar cost for not a lot of value added that I can see. Where do we I, get that price from, David? Is that something you can? That was from Melanson. I mean, is that something auditors. you can push them back on? They get our business. Well, I have year. and. Yeah. Ask them to relook at the numbers and get back to us. What is four, how many hours of time does 4,500 hours buy? Um, $4,500. I can't remember what the estimate because they I mean, had it's on it. Because it really is as simple as what Peter's talking about. It should be a lot less than 20 hours or whatever that number totals out to. Why can't we I get an offsetting credit? Because we've hired them to hire to. We've hired them to do the audit as of June 30th for 2014, right? I, I requested them. Would there be a reduction in the FY14 audit cost or the FY15 audit cost because of the amount of work that they would be doing on this? But, so, they're but I don't have an answer on that. You yeah. know, they send out confirmations to the banks and they look at the transactions before the right. month end and after the month end and make sure they're falling in the right period right. And, and so forth. And, and so basically, they would be doing that in um, they'd be doing that in course. August, and you would have the results of that within a couple of weeks as opposed to a year from now after the close of the fiscal year. But the, the end One product month. is a report that says the July 30th bank account numbers are whatever they are, right? Is that? They would have I mean, to reconcile. Done back and forth. They'd have to reconcile every cash account and, and um, make sure it's reconciled with the town's books. Again, my experience is every professional that I've been involved with hiring, and usually I do the contract stuff, so I'm not talking about policy, as, as a town council. Every professional has wanted and insisted and, and, and put that in the contract that there be this base audit. So if that's, maybe there's somebody out there who wouldn't want it, but is that the kind of person you want to hire to do this job? It's but, but that but that, that argument has is irrelevant to what we're doing here because to the extent we brought somebody in, it's at a future date, we, you'd want to do it all over again. And so I don't, I don't want to spend other people's money to point. make somebody comfortable that isn't even here or coming in. That's a good point, that it, a new hire is going to want to look at it as a date that they, they come in. So I... Uh, Which would probably I, be June I, I don't know, but I, but I'd certainly... You know, I think uh, if Pete has perspective on it, or if Deb has perspective on this, I'd certainly welcome it. I mean, these 
these people re re reconcile these accounts every month. Unless the audit is more than that, but that's all I understand is what you're really talking about. Is I, I, auditing if Pete wants account. to add something that I'm missing, but I think that that's what it is, is the reconciliation of um, every like account. That. When I came in, I, I asked for an audit and had an audit before I assumed the position. This would, also, this would be for protection of three parties, myself, to be sure that nobody comes back later and says, oh, well, he did this, he did that. And it's the bank it accounts, protects, right? It also protects the town to be sure that it's valid, and it does protect David, in this case, who was taking it over. So the three parties that, I, that are being protected here, uh, I, I agree, I think the cost is a little higher than I would have anticipated, but uh, that's the practice. And so, the pra so they're auditing the bank account reconciled book balances for the each bank account. That's correct. That's correct. And how many of those are there? They're going to be, well, all told, they're probably 10 or 15 various types of accounts, including investments. Oh, I understand. Yeah. And, and they, how, many, they, they, how many operating accounts where there's a whole bunch of transactions that would fall over at that period end? I tend to agree with you, uh, Peter, in the sense that it seemed like a little more money than I would have anticipated. But I wonder if we put the accounting, the auditing function out for a bid, maybe we'll get a lower price on, on this request. Because it seems to me, you know, we've had this company, we've sort of renewed their contract, and if they're not willing to be accommodating on something that happens once every 36 years, right. uh, maybe we need a different auditing firm. And they're but scheduled they, but, to come in next week. But, but again, keep in mind, they're auditing those very same accounts that he described, yeah. they did them last June 30th, yeah. they're doing them this June 30th. So whatever transpires between that period, and maybe, you know, maybe you just reduce it to the active accounts. You know, you, to have them do an investment, you know, a, an investment account that's sitting there earning 2% or whatever it's doing, from June 30th to July 31st, that's, that seems well, like, a, that seems like a waste now, of money to me. This, they did this two weeks from now, and they asked the banks for balances as of June 30th and as of July 31st. It would seem that might be a more efficient way for them to do it. Rather yeah, than but do that's it just a separate. part of it. They still have to look at the they transactions look at the before and well, after on each account. They're 12 months worth of transactions, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, they have to pick it as a precise point in time. Yeah. And that's really... Pete wants to make sure that with... When he hands over the keys to the candy store, if you will, that here, every amount that's there is the exact amount that happened through July 31st. I, I mean, I get that. I just don't think that the likelihood of error is, the likelihood of error is very remote. Uh, the cost to do it is very high. And the, know, the I, I would anticipate no problems anyway. The person I spoke to, um, Emma Lance and Heath, said that he would kick it up to the next level for an answer in writing to me about <coughs> what credit would be off something else if they could do that. Um, so and we also, have that answer by the 20th? Yes. And, al 17, whatever, and also whatever to whatever revisit the actual price that they gave us to begin with. I can also get a competitive quote from the, uh, the consultant that was planning to come in. Um, they, they do the same oh. kind of thing. So. Yeah. Keep in mind that you're going to want to do this again when David hands over the treasurer <coughs> function. I think Pete just said that, yeah. Yep. So, you know, maybe you can get a three for one deal. Two mm -hmm. for one, one deal. I think you ought to look at it as the cost of doing business anyway. As Paul said, this is the standard. Well, when I it, took it's not a standard in business. <laughs> Tell you. It's maybe standard in you know municipal scenarios when you're spending other people's money, you know, and a few hundred bucks here, a few hundred bucks there. Next thing you know, we got a twenty-two dollar tax rate, fifteen thousand dollar average tax bill, and home value is going down. So you're not going to find me too too happy to be doing this. Well, you're also I understand. Money. Again, I think it's highly remote that there's a risk. But can I yeah, suggest I mean, I, I, we put I, I look, this thing I, I off think until we, we get, get a final price? information from David, yeah. from the auditors, David, and I mean, explain, explain to them that um, we're going to need to revisit the whole audit function if we don't have an auditor that's willing to be accommodating on stuff like this, and that that's a huge number compared to what it's buying us, or at least it seems that way for us. 
Yeah, there was an email that uh, Pete had sent me that was from the auditor. Did I forward that one on to you? I don't know. No. I mean, it was just a sentence or two. It's right. not. So, so that was question four. Um, and then uh, you had some questions about staffing and, and how you approach staffing. I would kind of leave that up to you, I think. Dave. Yeah, what, if, if the, the board's comfortable approach? doing that, then that's, that's great. Works for me. Then yeah, you don't I think so. have I mean, to I make think, that decision. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I don't know that we need to make the decision. And I think you know that there's a lot of value in um, people who've been doing the job for a while and have information. Right. So I don't think. Yeah, I think the whole thrust of what this board and prior boards have been trying to do is to create a town administrator who handles the details and we handle the policy issues. So the issue of, you know, who does what and mm -hmm. all of that, that's what our town administrator is supposed to be doing. And if we're going to make him the treasurer, if that's the proposal, then you're the acting treasurer. You're responsible. Mm -hmm. So I agree entirely that it should be yep. up to him how you administer that job and who and mm -hmm. what hours and okay. yeah okay. oh yeah yeah no, and, when, and I think you're I think well your with that support it makes it yeah it makes yeah. it easier so to so I mean come it. back to us on the what is it the just no health insurance no. <laughs> well I mean come, come back to us on the twenty fourth with you know a refinement of what what your plan is we'll have more information about the closeout audit. Right. in terms of pricing and we'll be able to make a decision on that yeah i mean i learned two days ago i was on this task force you know oh at least you learned two <laughs> days ago <laughs> um, but 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 further to what paul said at the same time we don't want poor david they couldn't accept swimming you out of alone. The room if you weren't on the task force so it doesn't uh, matter no no I, <laughs> i'm happy to be out of the room i'll tell you okay um we're going to talk some about financial control policies david just as an initial discussion as paul pointed out nothing we've seen on in writing yet, so. Right. <clears throat> so I don't know if you want to um, go through each one, one by one, or. We don't know well, what's no, in no, no, there, so. Oh, there's, there's a bunch one of pack of There you go. Yeah. Um, or just look quickly through it and bring it back for. Well, why don't you, why don't you describe what, what you've given us, David? Well, the, the first thing is an employee leave request form. Um, some have been using it, some have not. And basically, uh, and it's to give me a heads up when somebody is going to be out of the office and who is, in going, to, who is going to be in charge during their absence. And that's just a form that doesn't need to be a policy, but I just wanted you guys to see that it's, um, that it's something I would like to do. Mm -hmm. well. I don't have enough for the whole audience. Would you like me to make copies? I'll go make a copy. It depends on how long we're going to. Well, aren't we going to study these? Because we haven't even looked at these. You have, yeah, this is the first time you've seen All right, it. I'm not like Congress where we pass something and then read it afterwards. No, I and this to, is important because we're, it. you know, that you, you've spent a lot of time, it sounds like, on putting the words on paper. Right. So we need to spend the appropriate amount of time to look at these words, which is not to say that you can sh certainly feel free to share. I have no problem with you sharing it, this with anybody. No, they um, can. I want to be sure that everybody is treated with respect, that this is, um... No, but I think, yeah. Well, Dave, why don't you go through and describe right. what's in here and so the, the next to negotiate words. The item yeah. is the, uh, it's just a memo that I was planning to send out, um, and it's just a reminder about the Board of Selectmen's policy from 2010 on policy and computer network and telephone access and usage, and it's just a reminder about, um, the process for getting who's responsible for what technology within their department uh -huh. and when they need um, our technology contractor um, Kevin Whitman to contact our office and that we would be the contact with Kevin as opposed to the individual offices contacting Kevin is that is that a new policy there or is that part um, of the 2010 policy Kevin we talked with Kevin and he prefers it that way and he says that's the way it runs in most places um, and that would prevent something showing up on the warrant um, to be paid out of our budgeted funds that we didn't So it's a up similar from. approach to how we do legal right, right. services. Right. right. Makes sense. Um, 
the other two policies are ones that the boards have, uh, board has referred to a couple of different times. But, I'm sorry, just before you get to that, David, but yeah. the, the title or the subject matter, you say access and usage, but you're not really tapping in, and I haven't read this, but the question is whether we're also dealing with issues that are dealt with in our personnel administration that, plan, which is, you know, what you can or can't do when you're fiddling with Well, the computer. whole policy is policy on computer network and telephone access and usage and that policy deals with all those issues okay. the area that i'm focusing on is this planning this and budget for person. computer and so maybe the reline is a little misleading maybe you want to just re rename this memo so that people are clear it's only dealing with this no, one nothing section. else has changed but it's dealing with this yeah uh, okay the, the, the cut where you mechanically the way you contact somebody who's going to come fix your computer. Right. And we'll be attaching the whole original memo. I mean, the whole policy as it was originally approved. Good. The next one was um, the board had requested them to look at townwide mailings and see how something could be controlled or um, prevent a number of townwide mailings going out at the same time when we could have combined mailings and save some costs on, on postage. So um, it elaborates about that. And basically, I talked about the problems that we encountered, made a recommendation, and then um, a proposed policy at the end. And it basically treats two different kinds of mailings. One is the routine mailing, such as um, tax bills that come mm -hmm. out twice a year. Um, just to put it down on paper that our office needs to get a heads up on when that's going to occur so that we can see if we want to put what they call a stuffer in, in with the tax bill. And under statute, that has to be approved in advance by the Board of Selectmen. So it's just talking about some of those things where maybe we could maximize the way that we distribute information. and. Um, maybe reduce the costs by combining some of the mailings if something has to be mailed out. Yep. The next one was professional development policy. And it's come up a couple of different times about um, looking for a way to um, get a grip on um, professional development, such as memberships, dues, conferences, seminars, travel, um, and related reimbursements. And this primarily would focus on um, out-of-state out state travel and um, <coughs> related expenses that exceed $250. It would have sort of a notica notification process. So it's really for the board to read through and see if that's if I understood what was being looked for or not. Okay. I think we saw a great example today of how to make it easy to get your out-of-state trip approved. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that was really good. And that's why I had them on the same. Yeah. It, yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. Anybody have anything they want to raise now before we sort of take this home and chew on it? No. No. And, and David, when you, I don't know if you're going to refine these any further before the next meeting or if you're no. going to take feedback. No, th this is going to be it. So maybe you can have some of these available at the uh, selectman's office. Yeah, I have these available now for anyone who wants to yeah, pick them up. I suggest you circulate it amongst the people who might be affected by it so that at the next meeting, to the extent that they have feedback, we can. Yeah, although, you know, put say. a big draft stamp on the top or something. This yeah. is for discussion. Yeah, my hesitation is that you haven't reviewed it yet, so I don't even know if I hit the mark with what you're looking for. So people, well, that's what I was asking you. Do, do, you ex do you expect to be making an interim revision based on whatever immediate feedback we might have? Not until I get feedback from the board of selectmen. Okay. But if you get feedback between now and the 24th, you may make some changes. I would, yeah, I'd bring those back to the board of selectmen. So, so can we agree to have? whatever you're going to have on the table for us on the 24th whether it looks like this or it has changes that's a thursday can you can, can you agree that by that monday you'll have them available to us and available to the public that might want to review or comment on them in time for that meeting 
Well, the meeting's going to be on a Thursday, right? So by so that, by Tuesday by that, afternoon, or I was going to say by Monday, by Monday afternoon. So you had a few a few days. So that's a week and a half from now. So if, right. if, if we give you some but feedback, he's, are you going away? You're oh, you're away. out. You're out next week. Right. Just, right. So by Tuesday afternoon, then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to, you know, establish a process. There are going to be people who are interested. So bring forth proposed, any proposed edits. Well, to I don't this know about edits, but if you get emails from any of us up here saying, did you think about this? What about this? I have a question about this. You can either incorporate it into here or put a comment in the margin or something. These are living documents until they're adopted, right? Right. right. And, but whatever the state of the art is as of the Tuesday before our next meeting on a Thursday evening, right. then just have, you know, Diane, have okay. Diane or you have those at the front counter so people can take yeah. it and look at them. Okay. Yeah, if I could just say that some of these say all employees, blah, 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 and it goes on with, when you're talking about all employees, I, I, I for one, want to make sure that all employees have an opportunity to see what this is and comment on it and provide things, their view and their perspective on it before mm -hmm. I vote on it. Oh, I, I got some views before they've actually even seen it. <laughs> all right. Sure. That's good. <laughs> Good. We town employees include us too. I mean, I mean, board, board members are town employees. It's as well, defined so. in the policy. It's pretty much anyone who's conducting town business. Yeah. Yeah. Carol. Um, I haven't seen this policy, obviously, but um, I did want to address one point that was made. I think two meetings ago, and I finally had the opportunity to see that piece on television the other night. And um, someone mentioned the fact that it might be a conflict of interest, according to the Ethics Commission, for employees to be signing um, bills payable for professional um, organization memberships. And so, um, um, as I always do, I went right to the source and called the Ethics Commission um, spoke to one of the attorneys that I deal with frequently and she said and I quote if and this was for me if I belong to a professional organization only because of the position I hold with the town then it is perfectly fine for me to sign that warrant um, also if I attend a professional um, education um, class or conference or whatever um, only because of the position I hold for the town then it is also fine for me to sign that warrant so that's pretty clear I think um, it would not be, and to give you the alternate um, example it would not be okay for me to sign the warrant if I decided to take a class on something that would have a much broader use than just my job, then I would need to have somebody else okay that, town administrator, assistant town administrator. But as long as it is a professional organization or a conference or educational experience that I'm attending only and solely because of the position I hold with the town, then she told me it was fine that I did not, in fact, have a personal financial interest. Okay, I mean, that's fine. We have to sign the warrant before a treasurer can cut a check. Right, I so think that's what everything. I think we'd have to be satisfied also, and that's. Right. I mean, and I'm satisfied when David's reviewed it and, and authorized it. So. Right, so th that's what, um, that's basically what the policies address is, is looking at the, the selectman's right. final control on the warrant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Anything? good. No, I think we'll look. I look forward to reviewing what he's put together. But that, that information is helpful. Comment. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that because that was that is different than what we had had heard the other day. Okay. Um, do we have any town administrator reports, David? Um, just there was a, a letter from uh, Michael Lesser to the board of selectmen. I'm not sure if that was. So we, do we ever get it? I don't think I saw that. No, it's related to a proposed um, changes in the Conservation Commission. So I, I don't think it was ever 
No, it was a letter to us, but it didn't reach us, I guess. No, 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 no I'm sorry. It's to the personnel board. Oh, to the personnel from, board. Okay, that's right. different. But there was a CC to me okay. that night. Wanted you. Okay. I wanted so you we'll, to have it. We'll have this. Good. Thanks. Yeah. And basically, what it's saying is the um, the current conservation agent has reduced hours, um, and they want to supplement the staff with an, an administrative assistant. Excuse me. Which I guess is an old model that was used by the conservation commission. So the position would be. An administrative assistant for I think it's 19 hours, but it would not be a benefited That's position. That's in addition to the agent's hours. The agent's hours, which are being reduced. Is right. That correct? Yeah. So it would be funded within the existing budget, but they wanted both to sets of hours would be funded in the existing budget. Yeah. And and but we're also losing a benefit position. Is right. that correct? Right. So we're we're actually on the plus side. We just saved enough to do pizza. big time plus. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, actually, what it what this does is there it's are more thing. within the budget. You end up with more hours devoted to conservation um, between the two positions, okay. and um, you save have the benefits savings um, that's significant. Uh, why it's going to the personnel board is because they want to make some updates to the old administrative assistant job description that they had. And under the personnel admin plan, all job descriptions need to be approved by the personnel board. And so this will be a uh, for the foreseeable future change in the structure of the conservation department. Right. You. And I think I don't think conservation has actually voted on this yet. Okay. So once they Subject get... Subject to the proper necessary approvals right. by them and personnel. This right. is so once said. they get an updated job description from the personnel board, they sh would be taking it back to the Conservation Commission for review and they would either turn it down or agree to move forward with it. And at that point, then it would become a posted hiring. And as uh, appointing authority of the Conservation Commission, where do we fall in the approval process, if at all? Um, basically, when it comes to staffing the conservation office under statute, they're allowed to do the hiring that they need to complete their mission, similar to the Board of Health. Yeah. Um, and so the, there isn't necessarily an appointment needed by the Board, board of Selectmen for this at all. Well, I, I hope that they understand, and every board and commission and every department head and every elected official understands that you have a great background in human resources, mm -hmm. and that this is a highly, the process of hiring people is a very technical area, and that there are, are lawyers like me who make a lot of money representing, defending hiring decisions right because if you don't do it right you create liability right and so at one point this board put forward the idea that all hiring decisions should be made by you in order to protect the community and while that's not the law in Sherburne I certainly would urge everyone who wants to protect the taxpayers and to to uh, make sure things get done right to use our town administrator and make use of the skills that he has to make sure that hirings are done correctly and lawfully. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, in, the, in the past four or six months, um, I've worked with the town clerk, the tr tax collector, um, the assessing office on filling vacancies, and that's prior to any changes on my job description that were done at town meeting. It's just been working, you know, in the right direction Good. in town yeah, hall. And we're going to go over that at our next meeting, your before and after. Right. We were going to go over to see what what things are changing because of uh, what was the voted job description and approved by change. the yeah, right. attorney general. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So people have been um, uh, respectful of of including me in their processes, yeah. and and I've been using the personnel admin plan as a guide to make sure that it's adhered to and then taking notes of changes that we should have to the personnel admin plan. 
okay. for the future. What about Farm Pond update, you said? Um, Melinda gave a brief update. Um, so I was going to mention that. And then um, I was just going to mention that Farm Pond is open full time and full swing. That was the reference to the operations. And um, w the enforcement issue that we'd been working at, we were working with town council and the police department to try to trace back exactly what um, can be enforced. Uh, town council said that they're comfortable with right now with anything that was officially approved uh, by the DEP in 1978. And I think I've been wor working with Pat on trying to compare what was approved then and make sure that the rules as they stand today are still those 1978 And they rules. seem to be from, yeah. from the comparison I saw. Right. So um, it's just something that's been kicked around there. Um, so the, the police will be able to enforce clearly that there should be no uh, mechanically propelled boats on Farm Pond. Uh, and that includes electric motors and, and gas motors. Okay. So that's where it had grown out of. Transfer station, anything? On the transfer station, um, we've been working with the designer, the engineer, to um, come up with a drainage plan. Um, the most recent design, we thought um, we should spend a little bit more money on to reduce the maintenance burden. Um, just the way it was designed, there was lots of runoff areas that would we'd have to rely on keeping them cleaned out as opposed to embedding some sort of piping system underneath the, the ground. So we're working to revise that. Um, so we're able to bury pipes given the conditions out there? Right. Okay. Right. Um, so what's the timeline for the paving project to be done? We're still shooting by the end of summer that it's, that it's going to be done. So by, by Labor Day? That's. Yeah, that would be End great. of summer is like September 21st. I'm trying to move you up three weeks. Oh, well, you have a long <laughs> summer then. <laughs> I would say the end of August is what we're Terrific. we're trying. Yeah. Okay. Um, we recently changed um, recycling vendors up there, um, and if you've seen, it's it's E. L. Harvey that's up there now, and after three or six months of them being in, we'll be able to see the numbers um, to see if anything is better or changed or, or what. Did so. we work out the issues with the prior vendor? Um, no, they still owe us money. Okay. Yeah. Um, they say that they're going to pay it now, um, oh. even after we've uh, had them come in and take their equipment out. Um, they, there's still a commitment to pay us, which we'll decide at some point if we want to have town council send a nasty gram to them. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a demand letter. It says right. who owes this and you need to pay it. And um, yeah, so that's um, some, and then there's this program that, that uh, recycling has been talking about the, the food waste program. Right. So there's going to be public information going out on that. So that's great. Um, How's that being disseminated? The public it is input? not a town wide mailing. That would be a good article for the newspaper to run prominently on its first page, this new recycling program that Sherburn has. Maybe right. a great idea if, if anybody from the press is around. Right, yeah. If you look at the um, <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the, uh, the that policy, you know, there, I listed every other option that um, right. should be exhausted before we do a mailing. So. Um, and then uh, I had upcoming meeting topics for August 21st was to look at just fee changes, um, any yeah, recommended that may, that may fee changes. That may be a, a meeting with some remote participation, so I don't know if that's the Yeah, I had that marked as remote. Or we can... The best meeting for fees. We'll do it the, the following one. Yeah, if, we, if we're September. having one on the 28th of September. And we also um, are talking to town council about doing... Um, the training that was provided for in their in their contract great that we'd do that um mid to late september Perfect. is what we're lining that up That's for great. after all the new committees are in and you can place. tell all the committees that they can send somebody or send m multiple people or right whatever. right that's great uh so that's that's all i had selectman reports how was the food at the coa food was great uh well, peter lifferton was the uh, grillmeister and uh it, it was 
It was, uh, could have been a free lunch for me, but I contributed that way. I'm not beholden to anybody, okay. and so I paid for my free lunch. Uh, but uh, otherwise, one question I had, I had gotten a call earlier this morning from Ed Wagner on uh, his plans That's for paving right. things. So could you speak to that and just make sure we're all on the same page here on that one, David? Right, um, thank you. There were, North Main Street is, um, the paving is gonna be Again, Tuesday, this Tuesday. This is the stretch from where to where? Cool, is it cool I can't to the Natick line? Yes. It is? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the, if you remember last year, uh, in the fall, we were going to be doing this project and we had a request to change the timing of it so that it wouldn't affect businesses. So now is the time we're, we're doing it. Um, so that'll begin Tuesday. Um, and that's chapter 90 money from last year. This year's Chapter 90 money hasn't come in. It's supposed to be released July 1. I'm not sure what the holdup is, but it hasn't been released. Okay. Um, but this is from last year. So the um, when they're doing this, this road reconstruction, they're basically grading the top surface of, of the road. Um, I think you call it scarifying or something like that. So you got to do something with those grindings. Um, the intent or, or what um, CM&D director is proposing is to spread those grindings over the Pine Hill Access Road to help it have some sort of binding course on the top to prevent it from all just running away the way it is now, which is the, the gravel. Um, so there are some concerns on the appearance of what that, that's going to look like, and I need to clarify that with, with uh, Ed. But that's what the contact was about, was um, spreading those, that top surface gratings onto the Pine Hill Access Road. So what I understood from Ed, that would allow for e better maintenance, more durability of that road Maybe as it currently drainage. stands, better, perhaps better drainage. Right. And easier for plowing in the winter and so forth. And the only thing I suggested was that he be sure to contact the superintendent to make sure he was. Which he has. Uh, he, so that make sure he was on board. I, and I and also to that. be aware that people expect to see more of a gravel road appearance than a slick, oh. slick black asphalt road. That's what I need to clarify with Ed is, is this can't be, it can't look or be paving. It can't appear that way. Can, can you notify the abutters though? There was the squirrels and chipmunks, or there were <laughs> there were concerns from the abutters that you know things were going on there that um, I talked to felt that they did, they didn't know about. I talked to Ed about that about the um, expected volume of the trucks on the first few days if they were going to take the scrapings up there and distribute them. So um, there is a plan to. And, and talk to those neighbors that were interested. And, and as I understand, it, there are no conservation or permitting issues for doing this, and there also uh, should be no environmental issues that the the grindings have things you don't want. Yeah, not that the ground. not that I'm aware of, and right. I'll double check with conservation. But I believe Ed had already talked to him. Yeah. I think, I think Susan said there's no wetlands. No, there's no wetlands. There are cross Route 16 down by Obed. Right. They've already determined that. Okay. Long ago, there's nothing jurisdictional. Okay, we're wrapping up here. Any selectman report from you, Paul? Uh, well, at the last meeting, I tried this remote participation. How'd that work out for you? And because of that experience, I've, I've uh, been working with uh, the town administrator brought my observations and my difficulties. And he has indicated that he's going to be doing further work on the process and the technology. I think David heard from a lot of people, Paul, <laughs> on this subject, including <laughs> you. Um, yeah, and, and it's got to be high on the, on the list of how to make sure this works for the other boards and for us if we need it again. It was, yeah. it was really, I mean, you, you probably were frustrated at your end. We were very frustrated here, too. Yes, and I, I want to you know, apologize to those people who are trying to speak to the board that um, I didn't get a chance to hear what they had to say. I, I did ultimately get a copy of the tape of the meeting, and I have listened to the tape of the meeting. 
but at the time uh, there were comments being made which I could not mm -hmm. make sense of. I could hear somebody talking, but I couldn't make sense of it. And they deserve to be heard. So we're working on, on uh, addressing that. Um, but I do apologize that people did uh, uh, make comments to the board. I didn't hear them at the time, but I have since, I want to reassure everybody, I have since heard and the tape and listened to what they had to say. So one thing is, we want to make sure people identify themselves to the to the speaker, I mean to the um, the person that's on the on the phone, and we want to make sure that they come up closer so that the equipment is picking them up instead of the equipment sitting here and trying to pick up the speakers from the ambient sound in the room. Yeah, and we and we may need to flip that table so it's over close right. to wherever the speaker is or however we need to do it. Right. The, the right. accommodation should be for purposes of the best. Uh, you know, function of this equipment and not necessarily what's going to look best on right. the TV. Right, right. Um, so there are a number of different things that we're looking into as well as um, looking into seeing why we can't stream the, the meeting live while it's going on. I mean, mm -hmm. many towns stream over their cable right. channel. Well, that would be the, perfect to be if I could have had the thing on my computer visually. Right. the classic was you said we'll now hear from Peter and, and I thought I was listening to Peter Caruso and it turned out to be a different Peter there's a lot of Peters yeah yeah it's not quite as good looking I might add <laughs> but on the phone nobody could tell that's yeah. <laughs> yeah that's probably true <laughs> yeah. so any, any, anything else do we have anything else on uh, no. selectman reports our next meeting is July 24th is everybody okay with an evening Meeting on the 24th. I'm yep. good. I think I am too. Yep, okay. I should put it in my calendar though. And um, let's see, we have no minutes to approve. And I thought there was a warrant downstairs. I saw it on the second. Is session. there a warrant? There is, is a warrant. Oh, you got it here, good. Well, yeah. Let's not forget like that. The warrants are done. Let's so not forget that. The year yeah. Oh, you finished? Okay. Yeah, warrant number one, right, for 15. This is, this is Deb Seifring from the accountant's office. Oh, so, hello. Yeah. Thanks for sitting in. You sat through all of that. That's the best fun okay. you can have on a Thursday afternoon, huh, Deb? That's right. Well, great. Let's so, have approval of all these. So this is yeah. wrapping up the FY14. And yeah, and I, I looked at it quickly, and I didn't, there was nothing that jumped out. Okay, so do we have so, a motion to approve the warrant? Dave, do you have any comments on it first? Um, there is um, there is an invoice in there from Board of Health that has been questioned. It's the Mark Orm invoice. Okay. Um, and that's been questioned by a member of the public, and we're talking with, with council and um, working through some administrative improvements with the Board of Health. Um, and But the detail, there is detail that's provided with that invoice that Peter and I did look through. I don't and know. Are you recommending it's okay to sign? Yeah, I think it's okay to sign. I think, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I saw nothing there to suggest that it wasn't, uh, or that it should be held off. Yeah. Okay. Right. So move approval. And there was an open issue on the last warrant. Is that resolved, or are we talking about that next um, time, or what's going no, on? No, I had it on here um, for this time. Basically, the, um, excuse me, the Council on Aging um, changed from charging the, um, the Pulte mailing for the Pulte Forum, charging that mailing to a state grant to charging it to their gift account where the private donations came in. And they did prove the, that they had received $450 in private donations for, for that purpose. So is that the amount of the invoice? No, the invoice, there'd be like $63 on top of that from the grant. Okay. I mean, the representation at the time was that this was a privately funded mailing, right? Right, right. So. Technically, it's not completely all privately funded, um, but it is from their gift account. There were three donors who mm -hmm. contributed to the $450, which was the bulk of what they had spent. And then they're supplementing with the state grant instead of using the gift funds for that $63. So the $450 was specifically purposed for the mailing? Yes. I mean, I, so we're talking 65 bucks. I mean, the point, I think we made the point at this stage that this was presented to us as a private, you know, privately funded mailing 
there were some concerns by some of the residents that it was on, you know, town letterhead or, you know, however right. you could describe it, certainly the town address. Um, and so it is flowing through the town's coffers here, but the bulk of it has been purposed, uh, you know, gifted specifically. So that, I take more comfort in that. Um, right. I, I think originally uh, we believe that it was completely being taken care of by a private right. entity but outside we of us. Because we were effectively told that right. at, at the right. meeting. Right, right. Um, so the first, in the invoice that was held was uh, maximized state grant funds. And then um, when we brought it to their attention that it was presented to us as private funds, they did show the, uh, the donations on their records. So um, it's not coming out of the state grant now? Just that $63 okay. supplemental piece. And is that so, in this warrant? Yes. Okay. So we're not holding that. We're not holding Board of Health. And there's nothing else in here that's questionable. Oh, I'm sorry. Questionable. That it's warrant is that's not the in last there. warrant. Right. That's the so last it's warrant. It's in the other right. warrant. Held right. aside from the last. Yeah. The one that we held out from last gotcha. time, okay. that would be um, voided. And then the new request would come in on a warrant. But it doesn't matter the fiscal year because of the... Um, Gift and grant. Yeah, yeah, the gift. So you're going to re we're going to redo it, is what you're saying. We so can. we'll. Yeah, okay, fine. Either way. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Good. Do we have a motion on? What am I looking at? Paul here? made a motion, and I'll second it on, on this one. This first warrant. The first warrant, one of 2015. All okay. in favor? Okay. Aye. We good with that? You look. Uh, no, I'd like to make concerned. sure that I confirm what we're. How many warrants There's are here? Two warrants. Two warrants. Forty-two is yeah. Forty-two is the last. One All right. What am I holding here? What That's is this? Forty-two here, but let's. We just voted on this. Let's get this signed. Well, yeah. this one says one on it. And this there's, one says one on it. Yeah, there's two pieces to one. Gotcha. One is oh. the payroll. Right, so they were just the stacked payroll. up wrong. They, yes. Okay. Perfect. We're good. Those numbers match. But the Excellent. motion that I okay. made and that Peter seconded is to do with. Forty-two. Yes. You okay? The motion for forty-two has been seconded. All in favor. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's and sign that. So we'll sign that one. And that's the last warrant of 14, correct? Uh, that's what it I says. 630. It's a 630. I don't know if she would she do it. We wouldn't do another warrant for FY 14, would we? There, there are um, encumbrances sitting out there. So we might have additional FY. Well, the question was here. Uh, Additional FY14 warrants could come before us. Well, there's no cleanup warrant as such. There's encumbrances that will happen, but it won't come through on a warrant. So okay. because oh, it's an okay. encumbrance, it'll be in the... It won't it'll be in a 15 yes. warrant. So that's the very last yep. FY14. The last okay. All right, and do we have a motion? Now, David, you've also reviewed this July 10th. I've been looking through them, and I'll continue to look through them, yes. Okay, and those are okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see the payroll piece, but there's two sign-off pages. Um, I, I, so I move to approve. Uh, I, I think we have, you know, more management understanding issues on what's in there, nothing to hold it out. And there's two different sign-off pages. Why is that? Uh, it looks like, so we have two sign-off pages, Deb, uh, because one, the one amounts. One, there's two, just because the payroll section came in late. Yeah. yeah. So we were so This is for payroll. payroll. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, yeah. So you can just delete this one. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. So did you make a motion? I did. I seconded. Okay. Further discussion, all in favor? Uh, just under further discussion. Oh, you want. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that the TA signature is not on this warrant. She's not I just no the town administrator, town administrator or town accountant. Downstairs it means something. <laughs> yeah, upstairs means town accountant. That's right. We're upstairs now, yeah. so let's just say town administrator's <laughs> signature. Yeah. So subject to my uh, vote to approve the warrant was subject to the town administrator's final review. Likewise. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So all in favor. Aye. Right. Okay. And soon, David will be able to sign these without as much falter off from us. That's right. We get a chance to look at it if we choose to, right? And, uh, and can hold something aside if we. Thought I it think made that sense. would begin in August. That's right. August first, the thirty days. From whatever date I told you, I posted. I think it was. A, yeah, July first. You said. Yeah. Some have an August. Okay. Oh, 
Coming soon. Great. So can I move to adjourn? Theater near you. Okay. Second. Adjourn. Second. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor, aye. Oh, good. Good I'll job, right everybody. Paul, we only seven minutes behind. You're wonderful. Your goal here.